What is going on guys? Today we're going to be installing the speed sensor on the RB. Unfortunately it's going to be a bit of a bitch, but before we get into that, let's roll that intro. <laughs> So before we get into that, I just want to do a little question of the day. Does your cluster work? Because for the longest time, my 240 cluster did not work at all. I went through two clusters and I was real annoying. So I'm just curious, does your cluster work? You know, let me know. So the reason that we have to install a speed sensor and we didn't install the speed sensor before is because I want to do boost by gear for my RB and you need a speed sensor to do that. So I was going to go without it and have all the other sensors and everything, but I want boost by gear. So I'm sort of in a position where like, let's do, let's just put it in. I tried putting it in before with the trans out and I just couldn't, I couldn't get the old speed sensor off because RB speed sensors, at least on the RB20 is cable driven. It's not electronic like the KA one and the KA one fits in and everything works good. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Fingers crossed, we can get it. So here is the speed sensor. Don't mind the dirt, we'll get that all cleaned up. But as you can see, it is electronic. It is. It does have a plug. Unfortunately, I don't have the other end to that plug. So we're going to be cutting that off and splicing the wires into the engine harness. The KA speed sensor is exactly the same as the RB speed sensor, except the RB one is not electronic. It is cable driven and this is electronic. So this will fit, this will bolt in and everything's good. The gear's the same tooth ratio, everything will be fine. So we got to get that in and in order to do that we have to take the old one out which is where I was having issues before. So we'll have to get under the car, we got her jacked up and then we have to drain the trans. Unfortunately it has brand new gear oil in it too. So we're going to have to get a container that we could put that in so we can pour it in later and we're most likely going to be putting it in through the shifter. A little hard to film under here actually gives you a better view of the trans mount bracket that I had to modify because it didn't line up unfortunately the holes were too far back anyways that is our speed sensor there so we have to take that out and as soon as we take that out a bunch of fluid is gonna come with it so we're gonna prevent that and drain it from there that is our drain plug right there so I'm going to try to use the fill port for the trans that's on the side. It's on the other side, right around where that sensor is. Because I do not want to have to take this mount off, loosen the motor mounts, drop the trans so we can get it through the shifter because the amount of room that you get up there is so minimal and it takes so long to do and to get it back and it's just not, not good. So I'm going to see if I can fill it the way it was intended to. Right there is our fill port. That is where we will be filling the trans, hopefully. So I'll have to probably go get a pump so we can fill it from there, because it is on the side, so it's like, how are you gonna fill it without a pump? You can't just like take a funnel and do that, unfortunately. That's not how gravity works. So while we're down here, I just wanna show you, I had to use my KA slave cylinder and that is the Chase Bay's clutch line that I've had for so long that I finally got to install. But I did have to use that because here's the RB one. And if you look, the only way it can go is that, right? For some reason, here's the bleeder valve and here is the port for the clutch line. That's wrong because the clutch line needs to be lower than the bleeder valve. The bleeder valve needs to be up higher so it can bleed the air out because when I was trying to bleed it, it just kept spitting fluid out instead of actually bleeding the system so it would never operate the slave. So, luckily I still had my KA one and we were able to put that on and it bolts right up, it's all good. The KA one works with the RB bell housing which is great because if it didn't, I would have been fucked. I don't know what I would have done, I would have had to figure something out. but. Yeah, I just wanted to, that, that was one of the weird things I ran into. 
it seems like the only things that went a little weird with this build so far have been with the trans for some reason So we've got our fluid in there and we got our drain plug back on I just have to tighten it but now we're going to get the speed sensor off all right guys I've got some great news we got her out boys this speed sensor was so annoying trying to get it out I had to clamp on vice grips and at first I was twisting it because I wanted to loosen up because it felt like it was seized around the o-ring which it was that's why I didn't want to come out and I just kept fighting it and fighting it and fighting it and it just didn't want to go so I sprayed some of this it's like WD-40 but better sprayed some of that all over it soaked it in let it soak for about 10-15 minutes came back out and then it turned easier and then I could wiggle it like side to side while pulling back at the same time and I finally got it out and that was very satisfying. Now we can put this boy in. But before we do that, I just want to explain the differences between the two and why you would want to go with the KA one. So for my RB speed sensor, this is all I have for it. This is part of the cable. The guy on the left goes in the one on the right and the gear spins that and that spins this, which spins the cable that's in there that you can't really see because they fucking cut it. That's why I have to use the electronic one. Because I'm assuming this has to go to something electronic at some point because there is the input in the ECU for the speed sensor. And if it's driven by a cable, how would the ECU know? So it has to at some point go to something electrical. Now I'm assuming if you have all the pieces, then you could probably get away with using this. I don't know if it's cable drive is better or electronic is better, but we're going to go with the electronic KA one and it should go in no problem. So before we put it in, I want to cut this plug off and then I want to put these on. These are spade terminals. It's a male and a female together right now and they create a pretty nice seal. So I'm going to put these on the ends so it'll still be unpluggable and then I'll redo this in wire harness tape, make it look good. Alright guys, we got the harness all wire harness taped up. Looking good. We got our two spade terminals here. We got a male on the right and a female on the left. So there's no way that I could plug this in wrong, even though with this speed sensor, polarity doesn't matter, meaning it doesn't matter which wire goes where. I like having the habit of making it to where they can only go on one way. So if I run into something that is polarity specific, meaning one wire goes to one spot, one wire goes to the other, and it cannot work the other way around, I I'm already in the habit of doing it like this to where it can only go in the correct way. So that's just a tip for you guys. So now I'll label this. I'll put a little label right here saying speed sensor, even though I already know what it is. It's pretty obvious, but you know, just just because, you know, another good habit to have. Label everything electrical. Everything electrical. Label it. Just just cuz. Just label it. You'll thank yourself later. All right guys, now she is ready to go in the 240 trans. Okay guys, so we got our speed sensor in. And I went ahead and I put the fluid that we had in here back in the trans. Unfortunately, we do need more, so we'll have to do that. But this pump right here made life so much easier. I think it was like eight bucks, something like that. Real cheap, real nice at Harbor Freight. Not the greatest place to buy your tools, but they have some good stuff you know this is great as well as their engine cranes are known to be pretty fucking great so picked one of those up too a while back but anyways that's gonna do it for today's video guys sorry i didn't get a whole lot of footage from under the car not a whole lot of room under there it's not an ideal working condition so fortunately we couldn't film everything but i tried to do my best got what i could and i hope i explained it well enough 
to where you understand what we had to do to get everything to work. And if you do have any questions, definitely comment down below and I will answer them if I know the answer. We are so close to getting this thing fired up, like really close, like the ECU is literally on the way here now. It's not supposed to be here for another week, but you know it is ordered off Amazon, so Amazon might come through with that amazing delivery service. Just everything about Amazon is amazing. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's the next video, is getting the ECU, getting it wired in, getting ready for the first startup. But thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you did, comment down below your answer to the question of the day, and then hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. No, no, no.